Hello everyone, my name is Renata Kaczmarska and I'm the focal point on the family. I'm addressing you from New York, from the United Nations headquarters. I'm here to answer a question, why advocating for family policy is becoming increasingly significant considering sustainable development goals and the summit of the future. Well, there are several reasons for that. Number one, family policies are indispensable if we are to achieve many of the SDGs. Number two, family policies are not yet fully recognized as significant for 2030 development agenda, despite the efforts of many levels, including the work of civil society. So there is a lot of work to be done. Number three, we simply owe it to future generations. Let me now expand on the three points I mentioned. Point number one. As you know, the 2030 Development Agenda and SDGs are a blueprint for development for all countries. And they all accepted this blueprint and agreed upon, and all except a few, report on their implementation. Eradicating of poverty, hunger, promoting of education and gender equality is not possible without policies focusing on families and their well-being and the involvement of families themselves who are agents of development. It is families who drive development and need supportive policies for development to take place. Families have strong motivation to make sure that their children succeed. They have vested interest in the future and the fate of future generations. In our research at the United Nations, we focus a lot on several SDGs and the way family policies can help achieve them. If you are interested, please consult our website. Sadly, SDGs are currently badly out, uh, off track. Recent uh, taking stock of SDG progress at the mid midpoint where we are right now, <clears throat> we know that out of 140 targets that can be evaluated, half of them regressed and more than 30% have experienced no progress or regression below 2015 baseline. So only 15% are on track, 48% moderately off track and 37% are in stagnation or regression. For example, if current trends continue, only one third of countries will have national poverty by 2030. In education, without additional measures, only one in six countries will achieve the universal secondary school completion target by 2030. An estimated 84 million children and young people will still be out of school and approximately 300 million students will lack the basic numeracy and literacy skills. In gender equality, only 15% of Goal 5 indicators are on track. At current rate, it will take 300 years to end child marriage, 286 years to remove discriminatory laws, and 47 years to achieve equal representation in national parliaments for women. Importantly, families are not yet fully recognized as significant for the achievement of SDGs. How do we know that? A few years back, we conducted an analysis of voluntary reviews uh, that countries submit at the following um, facts uh, transpired. When we analyze 127 of those VNRs submitted by 114 UN member states between 2016-2019, close to 90% of countries made reference to families. And governments noted that family policies are especially useful for the implementation of SDGs 1-5 to as well as 16. However, what is clear is that governments mostly refer to families as units of diagnosis or as targets in their efforts towards the achievement of SDGs above, but family-oriented policies are not considered an integral part of overall development efforts. So the fact remains that the potential of families and family-oriented policies to achieve SDGs remain to be fully addressed in overall socioeconomic policy making. For instance, out of 95 member states reporting on poverty, 33 have been developing some family-oriented policies to combat it. Among those, some have implemented programs that work closely with targeted families, others work with families as co-managers of programs, and some involve parents in planning to overcome their precarious socioeconomic conditions to, um, or address their specific needs. Families are regarded as active agents in development and are well supported in countries that have a robust institutional welfare system. In others, the institutional context is more challenging and assistance to low-income families provided on ad hoc basis. 
Although early childhood education is offered in several countries, only 11 have implemented programs to empower parents as collaborative agents in improving the quality of education. On the positive note, we know that the most effective uh, family-oriented policies are within the field of family work balance, where many member states provide different coordinated and comprehensive parental leave schemes to promote a better shared responsibility and conciliation between family and work. Some also provide flexible work, public or private childcare facilities, or shared parental or family relatives leave to alleviate women's work burden and promote their empowerment. So some progress has um, undeniably been done, but more remains to be um, accomplished. So in sum, we need advocacy for family-oriented policies because family-oriented policies and priorities are still absent in most national reviews. Several member states address families as beneficiaries, but the potential of families as agents of development remains underutilized. The integrative nature of the 2030 Agenda demands multi-sectoral and comprehensive actions and the recognition of spillover effects between SDGs. Many VNRs show a transitional trend towards assuming such approach, but a few governments have undertaken family lens approach. So, um, if I may, such advocacy efforts should support the following. To accelerate progress towards SDGs, family-oriented policies should be integrated into overall social poli socio-economic policy making. Multidimensional perspectives should be taken into account and, if necessary, go beyond legislative measures and address socio-cultural barriers to tackle many issues affecting families, such as domestic violence. Number three, we owe it to future generations. So, where are we now? We are now gearing up towards the summit for the future to take place in September in New York. We cannot speak of the summit of the future without mentioning future generations. And, in, and interestingly, um, close to 400 General Assembly resolutions mention future generations since 1961. Major global shocks in recent years, including, including COVID-19 and um, climate ch change crisis, have challenged our international institutions. Unity around our shared principles and common goals is both crucial and urgent. The Summit of the Future is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to enhance cooperation in critical challenges and address gaps in global governance, reaffirming existing, existing commitments, including Sustainable Development Goals and United Nations Charter, and move towards a reinvigorated multilateral system that is better positioned to positively impact people's lives. Building on the SDG Summit in 2023, Member States are to consider ways to lay the foundations for more effective global cooperation that can deal with today's challenges and um, threats in the future. So the idea is that an action-oriented pact for the future will be endorsed by heads of state and government at the summit, showcasing global solidarity for current and future generations. The preparatory uh, process um, has, of course, started um, this year, and several uh, policy briefs have been issued. I would like to mention one of them, um, uh, which is entitled To Think and Act for Future Gener Generations. Reading of this brief gave me, gave me hope uh, as thinking of future generations has to take into account families where the future generations will grow up in. The Secretary General of the United Nations is making efforts to give voice to future generations by recommending to establish an envoy who would advocate for them and serve as a voice for future generations at the global level. And a dedicated forum which would inter alia ensure meaningful participation of all relevant stakeholders and, I quote, in particular children and young people as current and future decision makers with the greatest affinity for future generations. What is to follow is also a declaration to define and make concrete, duty, uh, concrete our duties to future generations. Future generations will be our children, your children. So it's all about the conditions you will prepare for your families and your children. The Secretary General says, unless we act now, the 2030 agenda will become an epitaph for a world that might have been. So what are the recommendations? World leaders should come together at the SDG Summit to deliver a rescue plan 
for people and planet, centered around three major breakthroughs. Number one, equipping governance and institutions for sustainable and inclusive transformation. Prioritize policies and investments that have multiply effects across the goals. Secure a surge in SDG financing and an enabling global environment for developing countries. So we need more political will, more action to progress with SDGs. We need to advocate for more. There are no excuses not to be ambitious. Never before have we had such an abundance of knowledge, technology and resources to succeed in ending poverty and saving the planet. At the SDG Summit, we must match the abundance and responsibility with global, national and local commitments to deliver the finance, galvanize leadership and restore the trust that together will put us on course to achieve the goals by 2030. As we are reaching the final stage of our preparations for the 30th anniversary of the International Year of the Family 2024, as you may know, we will be focusing on families and climate change. No doubt, we need more advocacy efforts in these areas as well. Families play a role in advocating for government action on climate change. They play a role in teaching good habits on responsible consumption. We have to be equipped with good evidence-based research and advocate for better family-oriented policies in the future. We can advocate in different areas mentioned earlier and beyond, and you must be part of it if we are to achieve the goals and targets of the 2030 Development Agenda and beyond. The important thing is that we have a blueprint for development. We have resources. It is the will of governments and work at the local level that can bring us closer to achieving development goals and make the planet fit for future generations and for overall family well-being. The future is in your hands. Let us do our best to make sure that future generations inherit the world in a good shape. And I think you can do a lot. Thank you.